And 80 years after women were first conscripted into the army, we hear memories of the teenagers who found themselves in the thick of World War II. Now, 20 past six, go on. 80 years ago, an act was passed in Parliament which led to more than 7 million women being called up to help with the, war, the World War II effort. Now, this was the only time in British history that women were compelled to serve, taking up role as mechanics, ambulance drivers and air raid wardens. Breakfast, John Maguire has been to meet some of them. In the concrete emplacements at a gun site in the London area, battle-dressed ATS girls are in training for active service. They were teenaged girls on the verge of womanhood in the time of a world war. I wanted to do something for the war effort, and I think most people did. I wanted something exciting to do and to learn a skill. I wanted to be a driver. Daphne was in search of a world outside her Norfolk village. I'd like to have gone at 17 and a half, but my mother wouldn't sign the form. But at 18, you could go. So immediately I was 18, I wanted to go. We're going and out. Grace joined for love. It sounds a bit silly, but one of the reasons was I, I had a boyfriend. He was in the army, my first boyfriend, of course, and uh, he had been told he was going to be sent abroad. And I thought, if I joined the army, <laughs> I might meet up with him again. I didn't, I, didn't want, I didn't like the idea of him being sent away. All signed up to the Auxiliary Territorial Service, the ATS. Young, keen to learn and to understand army ways. So I went to Norwich and listed and my mother came and I remember she was buying all new underclothes, pyjamas and everything. We didn't realise, of course, we were going to be issued and all this stuff. The great coat was five, and the jacket were five, the jersey were one, and the knickers were two. <laughs> That's the rest of it. Three, one hundred. Grace worked on anti-aircraft guns. Now you see, when the two chaps that were on the guns had to sit with their back to the actual target, they had to do as, as they were told from us girls. So in actual fact, the girls were targeting the aircraft, but the men were doing the actual firing. All three are featured in a book on the ATS titled Army Girls. Daphne's copy arrived as we were filming with her. Are you on the back? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Pride of place, Daphne and all have fond memories of their wartime service despite the dangers they faced. It was a wonderful experience. You were there and you, you never thought you might be killed. I certainly wasn't terrified. You're just doing a job. When you're told to, to take post, of course, you run and get to your instrument as soon as you can, and you, all your girls are running at the same time. You've just got to grab your gas mask and your seal helmet, take the covers off your instrument and start searching the skies. Their training meant they learned skills they could only dream of. If you put a three-ton Bedford on my drive now, I could strip the engine down and put it back again. We did everything. You see, the carburetors were all sealed on army vehicles to 40 miles an hour to, because of the petrol situation. Uh, but staff cars and ambulances weren't sealed. So I could put my foot down and do 80. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have a very high wheelbase of those. And as you're coming up to 70, you have to push it through that last bit, otherwise you've got a wheel wobble. <laughs> and what they remember most are the friends they made, despite, or often because, of the hardships they faced together. I know we had some dreadful times during the war, but I enjoyed being with so many girls, and we could have a laugh, and when we were travelling in the in the... 1500 weights in the back, we'd, we'd sing and we used to sing in desk camp, you know. <laughs> because of the ATS, it stood me instead for a wonderful job, because I had a wonderful job with the GPO all my life. It was the best university I could have gone to. It was wonderful. It wasn't all beer and skittles, as I say. Uh, there were some sad times, very sad. And that was when the war was really brought home to you. When the site was in action, we never thought about people in the aircraft that were been brought down. It was the enemy, and it was there caught in the searchlights, and it was there to be destroyed. You didn't think about anybody in it until uh, later. 
And 80 years since they first joined up, many of their memories are as vivid as ever. Memories they remain determined to share so that we remember the sacrifices their generation made. John Maguire, BBC News. A little bit of inspiration to start your day there. Yeah, and it was a big moment for women, wasn't it? Because until that point, many of those women weren't even have thought about a career and then the war ended and they wanted to keep on working, so it changed everything for women. Brilliant.